This is Neil Petwari, and I'm going to talk in this segment about the time domain transmitted signal in QAM, and I'm going to represent it in complex baseband as well. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to talk about how in QAM we had the following two basis functions. In QAM we're going to have a list of symbols. These symbols are going to be S0, S1, S2, all the way up to S capital M minus 1. These each are going to represent some values of A0, 0, 0, and A0, 1. These are the amplitudes that I would multiply my two basis functions in order to form the time domain signal for symbol S0. And overall, what we do is we transmit a signal S of t, and I'll write it here as a sum. So this is a sum over all n, and for each a0 of n, this would be the symbol that I want to send at symbol n. These pulse shapes overlap in time, and I need to add them all together in order to get the transmitted signal. What I'm going to talk about is how this really, because I have a cosine and a sine, and some amplitude of each one, that really what I get is a amplitude and an angle that I'm adding for some cosine with a phase angle. Okay, and the phase angle is as if a n was a complex number, that a n magnitude would be the magnitude squared of a1 plus a0 squared, all in the square root. And the angle would be the inverse tangent of a1 divided by a0. This form shows that s of t has a magnitude and an angle. an is really a complex number, that a n is equal to a1 of n plus j uh, a2 of n. And this form we've referred to as complex baseband, um, but this form would have the same representation where the magnitude of the complex number a complex baseband of n would be this and the angle would be this. I can kind of write s of t again as square root of 2 I'll bring out and I'm going to pull out the real part and I'm going to pull out an e to the j omega naught t and I'm going to multiply it by this complex baseband signal in time that I write then as follows. Okay, so my complex baseband signal is an amplitude multiplied by the pulse shape delayed by n times t sub s. A n here is a complex number. I could write it as a c b for complex baseband, but in general we will just avoid putting that on there and assume that if we're talking just about a and not a0 and a1, that it's going to be represented um, like this. Oh, this these numbers should be a0 and a1. And when I do that, I plug in this sum into this real part multiplied by e to the j omega naught t. And when I take the real part of that, I will get the cosine of omega naught t plus the angle of the value of a. And of course, my pulse shape is not uh, complex. It is real valued in this case, so it will also pull out of the real operator. Okay, so what I get is a, a complex baseband representation in time, which is a little bit further than we got in the last video segment where I talked about complex baseband as a replacement just for the vector of a symbol. So what I'm going to plot here is this function and I'm going to plot its real and imaginary part. What I'm doing here is QPSK, quadrature phase shift keying, which as we saw has these symbols that are in the different quadrants at the amplitudes of 1 and minus 1, and it's essentially the same as for square quam, but QPSK is a quadrature amplitude modulation, so I have both of these uh, real and imaginary parts. So when I simulate some random symbols, I get the following plots. Um, this is using a pulse shape that is the square root raised cosine pulse shape um, with a particular value of alpha that I don't recall off the top of my head. I generated this in MATLAB just like um, I generated your binary PAM simulation. 
except now I have a real and imaginary part representing the phi zero part and the phi one part respectively. You can see that there is some ringing because it's a square root raised cosine pulse shape and not a rectangular shape. But you can see approximately what the symbol period is. It's approximately something like this length is a one T sub S. Okay, and what I'm doing is generating many bits or many symbols and plotting them over time. Okay, that's the time signal for S of T, and in particular the complex baseband part, the real and imaginary part. You don't see a sinusoid multiplying this signal, you just see the uh, real and imaginary part of the complex baseband signal. But you can imagine the true time domain signal would have that cosine that would be going up and down very, very quickly here and making this very hard to look at. The phase trajectory plot looks a lot like the constellation diagram except that it shows lines in between the times at which our transmitted signal was at these points. And the phase trajectory plot essentially takes this complex baseband signal and it plots the real part of S, C, B of T on one axis and the imaginary part of S, C, B of T on the other axis. But because it's plotting all time uh, on one 2D plot, that time has gone away. It's as if it was plotting it over time and we flipped the axis of time around so that we were looking straight through it. And now we can't see time passing in this figure. But we can see that what's happening is that my signal is starting somewhere. It starts at zero at, before the transmitted signal gets started being generated, kind of, uh, you know, before I start this plot and it goes up to here and then it goes you know to another symbol and maybe it stays at that symbol for a period of time but then it you know transitions to the next symbol and to the next symbol and you know so on and so if i could plot this over time as a video you might see this this dot going across the screen here transitioning from one constellation point to the other um, but this phase trajectory plot is simply taking the complex baseband signal uh, in the time domain uh, and plotting the real part on one axis and the imaginary part on the other axis.